I do need to think of how to squeeze my Charlie Barron's bobblehead into the show, <laughs> like in the background. <laughs> it's got the Ope hat on. Nice. Ope. Yeah, it's pretty good. I saw that. That was another one. Saw that on social media, and I'm like, twenty five dollars <laughs> done. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to episode 75 of that Range Life Show sometimes about golf. We're going to talk some golf today, because mm-hmm. as much as we like to say sometimes, last week was very sometimes about golf, but we're a golf show. That's, that <laughs> that's guy over there, that's my guy, Chris McEwen. This is his YouTube page channel, however you want to say it. Do us both a huge favor. Subscribe down below. Okay? Subscribe. More of these videos coming. We know we've been teasing a lot of stuff and not pulling our weight. We had another we had another production yeah. meeting before the show where yes. we were laughing at our own ideas that we will execute. We have some good <laughs> we have some good ones. Uh Chris and I, um, sneak peek, are playing golf together this coming weekend. We've discussed plans for it. It is so far pretty minimal. But we'll see what happens. You know, the juices get flowing during the week. We start coming up with more ideas. We'll see. Frankly, I'm just gonna be happy to play any golf. Yeah, it'll be good just to be that together. Might just, that might just be the video itself. How's Bill's return to golf? Yeah. <laughs> How's the return to golf? I'll, I'll tease what we're you know, some of the stuff we'll talk about later. But I, I'm testing the waters a bit, and if you go back to I think Wednesday of this week on DrivingRangeHeroes.com. Yesterday. You can find a post about me testing the waters of golf with the, our buddy, The Riv, our nephew. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm, very, I'm a little nervous about what's in store based on that for Chris and myself this Saturday. But maybe we'll make some good golf content to share with you, and that's why you should subscribe. Hit the bell. That's right. Get notified when it drops. Right. Do us a big favor. You're happy to be here with us. It's 75, right? Three quarters of the way to a dollar here, all right? Like the video for us. Maybe give us a comment. Tell us what's up. How, how have you been? I saw saw Scoob took uh, a big digger in the mud on social media. Like, <laughs> yeah. Scoob, I, I, Chris, do me a, Chris, drop the picture in right here. Drop the picture in. You want me to go find that picture? I'll find it and send it to you. Okay, yeah, do that. This is Scoob in the mud. Okay. There we go. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> do us that favor. And don't forget to head over to secondcitygolf.com. You could buy, not this hat. I thought I had a different hat. <laughs> it's my Scott Redmond Concepts. Hat. I know. Shout it's another there. day where we're not wearing. Oh, there you go. You got your you got your t-shirt. DryRangeHeroes.com. I'm trying to use that. That is my wife's name. DryRangeHeroes t-shirt. Right. I got the uh, DryRangeHeroes shorts on right now. Uh, these, I... I've, I've, I think I've worn a pair of these shorts. I have three colors of them. I have worn a pair of these shorts every day for the last three weeks. Um, laundry has been fast and furious in the Bush household. All right. On to the show here. Gear mm. talk. Dealer's choice. Wait. Okay. Do you want to talk about the contest at all? Um, I've got a winner. If you want to announce if I want me to announce it. Or do you want to save it for the end so they have to either watch the whole episode or skip to the end? Don't <laughs> skip to the end. Just let it play in the background. We'll do it after end. Gear Talk. We'll leading, right, yeah. Right. After Gear Talk, we'll we'll announce the winner. That's is it, what, what's a, what's the term for them? I don't know. I'm burying the lead or a teaser. Uh, a teaser. Teasing it. Teasing yeah. it. Tease. Um, all right, we're gonna we'll we'll talk about that after Gear Talk. But Gear Talk dealer's choice this week, Chris. Okay. The UST Mamiya Recoil Dart Iron Shaft. It's a mm. it's a shaft battle here for the choice. Or the Fujikora MC Putter Shaft that people have been pretty excited about. Which one do we want to cover this week? Um, let's do the Putter Shaft. Mm, I am okay. curious about this one, so I want to hear about this one. Yeah, I have a lot, I have a, a lot to say about it, so I'm All happy right. to do so. All yeah. right, let's do it. Let's kick right into gear talk. Let's talk the Fujikura MC putter shaft. Let's go. All 
All right, Chris, welcome to this week's Gear Talk. Good to be back. We'll see how it goes. First, Gear Talk uh, being back on the show. Let's see if I yeah. still have my sharp equipment focused uh, quip <laughs> that I'm known for. <laughs> All right, let me grab here. Let me grab these to get started here. Right? Okay. There's three of them, Chris. There are three Fujikora MC. There's really no good way to line them up here on the camera. Good thing we have pictures. Uh, it's true. There are three different putter shafts that Fujikura offers. So let's okay. talk about this. MC stands for multi composite, I believe, or multi material construction, something like that. But that's the big, okay. the big shtick with it, right? Okay. Not so just, it's not just a steel or graphite shaft. Right. There's okay. multiple materials. And so this is a big market right now, right? It's uh, yeah. more stability in the putter shaft. It's taking. It's reducing torque, and torque is the club's natural uh, inclination to twist around and turn. And basically, uh, in a putter, you want no torque. You just want to right. hit the ball straight. You don't want the club to twist and bend and do all these right. things. But you don't want to sacrifice like feel for that. Correct. Yeah. So, it's, it, and this isn't the first time graphite putter shafts have been in the market or as a composite material or something sure. along these lines. In fact, sure. this is even the second version of the MC putter shaft that Fujikura has made. Okay. Well, the big, the big ones that have caught all the attention breakthrough golf technology, stability shafts. We've talked about sure. them on this show. Sure. They have a new one out now. We got to, might have to check that out. Probably saw that uh, LA golf. Bryson playing the big hockey stick looking thing in the match, which by right. the way, I thought this match was not, not good. And is a, <laughs> I didn't watch a, literally. I did not watch a second of that. I, wa I watched some and it's like, it was still, like we said during the last match over COVID, we were very impressed because you know what, at least it was something, you know, there was some golf to watch and it actually ended up being really enjoyable. It's true. Um, right. Credit side. We're going to sidebar in here real quick. <laughs> credit to Phil. I made a comment on Twitter. It's like, he's like, well, hang on. Let's just, Bryson, tell me what you would do here. He's doing a lot of that with him. Like, this guy's now like producing, directing, and hosting the show. Yeah. Like, he wants the IMDb credits and give it right. to him. And I mean, I think on the show specifically, Locked on Golf podcast, I have been very open, not a big Phil guy. Yeah. Um, it was, it had started prior to his PGA championship win, but it definitely helped. I'm coming around on into the Phil camp. He had a, he had a very interesting seven days or so when he decided to, you know, get into a Twitter fight with a reporter about a story. Right. And then, yeah, the whole, yeah. Anyway, even that, yeah. like, a lot yeah, of, like he, he all... shows up, he shows up really well in these. Yeah, sure. He, he definitely like well, kind of steals the show fireside chats and right. the social medias, but even like right. the whole media spat, all these guys do it. All Rory's done it. Brooks and Bryson DJ, they they've all tiger. They all do it. I don't care that Phil got in a spat over this, whatever. Yeah. Um, but man, credit to Phil did a good job. Like it was, the, it just, it's just brutal. And then like, t uh, whoever's, you know, TNT, TBS, whatever, whoever's involved in putting it out. All the like five minute comedy bits about like uh, Tom Brady being the goat. And I'm like, I don't care about any of this. And you're like, stop trying so hard. Anyway, that was all because I mentioned LA golf having their <laughs> back to the review multi composite, right. multi material composite shaft in the, in the thing. Anyway, so <laughs> um, these are names that have existed, but Fuji yep. grew up. So I think what people, you know, it's easy to forget. Fujikura, Japanese brand, right? Mm -hmm. They have a Carlsbad. Basically, they have a Carlsbad HQ, like every major golf company there is. They're all in yeah. Carlsbad, right? Yep. And they have like the Japanese HQ where they are the experts in the crazy composites and graphites and what have you, right? So it's all these new age, you know, BGT shafts, LA mm -hmm. golf shafts. And mm -hmm big dollars i mean I, th I think you're talking somewhere four four fifty for that la golf shaft the breakthrough golf technology do they you i, I can't remember are they like 200 or are they 300 they're not cheap no they're they're not yeah they're they're somewhere in that range and they have you know they're 
part steel, part graphite. You have to get right. them built like just so. So you have to send them off or you have a. Do you send your putter? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a to do. Um, yep. not saying you, I should, you know, I shouldn't say that's a, like, that's a bad thing. I condone, unless you really know what you're doing, having somebody expertly built build your golf equipment. yeah and there's some balance involved in the right. whole kind of thing well, for especially sure when you start there's a reason into, they do it for sure when you start getting into two to five hundred dollar golf shafts never right. mind your putter head <laughs> right your grip um right. so that's a lot of money and you know it's like what what what's happening in that space what are they doing and it, like i said i've said good things about that bgt shaft but it's it's big it's thick it's yeah. It's a different look when you look down at it. Um, it does take some adjusting. So you know, it's not like oh, I've been playing with a steel putter shaft forever. This is an easy transition for me. Okay, mm-hmm. it, it, it's it is different. Then the LA golf stuff, like that's a lot of money for essentially a graphite shaft. Now this is what I enjoyed. Fujikura uh, poked the bear a little bit, sort of going, well, there's no reason we can't do an industry comparison. And they basically highlighted their shaft versus the LA golf shaft and the difference in them. And I, and I don't, I don't think this is, I feel bad. I like, I can already feel the heat coming at me for this one. <laughs> like, I don't know if I think they're wrong there. Like I'm buying a 400, $450 putter shaft that is essentially just a crap load of graphite rolled up into a tube. Yeah. Like, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. It's ultra stiff and just a bunch of layers of graphite. Like what? What am I getting for that money there? You know, I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know. Everybody has their own subjective feelings of what works up. Fine. But Fujikura said to Japan, their Japan HQ, like, hey, we got to be able to do something in the space and use our technology and think about this a little bit through or think through this a little bit more. And they came up with this line of putter shafts. Now, what's interesting it's multi-material, right? So yes, there's graphite in it, but in all that graphite, they they like I, I don't I wouldn't say they wove it in, but basically integrated rubber into it. So that rubber, okay, yeah, yeah. So we've talked about these other shafts in the past, like to dampen the feel, so you aren't getting a bunch of noise, right? You're just feeling the golf ball. So it's not like dampening, like oh, I can't feel anything. It's taking the vibration and shock out of it, so you just get pure feedback and response, right? So mm-hmm. they did that. But then like, well, we still we want we don't want this thing twisting. We want these things to be like pretty stiff and rigid, but we can't do that and maintain feel. So how do we find the right way? Well, like the bottom eight inches, so like the tip of the shaft going into the club has a steel tube inside of it. Like basically uh... a like small, tiny teal steel tube mixed in there. Yeah. That the com- rubber graphite composite like and envelops i like saying envelops <laughs> then so okay that's cool so that keeps it stiff gives you like a precise direct feel that's so like that also helps to like not feel dead through the putter shaft yeah but then now that they have that steel shaft in there and all this graphite they put to give you a little more feel and in, in there but not make it like rock hard too there's a copper tube on the butt end of the shaft so like where your hands go okay so You'll get some vibration and vibration yeah, equals there's some, feedback. Right. Not sure. Shock necessarily, but like you will get feel there. It's still dampened, but it's not going to be uh, super. It's going to be softer because copper is a soft metal. Right. Sure. That's the that's what they tell me. That's that's the idea behind all of it in a simplified fashion. Here's what I can say to you. I've tried all of them. So they have three of them, right? They have. A regular one. So if you're like a, it's called the the flexes are firm. They're all 115 grams, by the way. That's pretty heavy for a putter shaft. Okay. So you have a firm one, <clears throat> right? You can even like do this with them. They they flex a little. Oh yeah. Right. Wow. Firm. Okay. Then you have smooth. This is like the lightweight one, where this one you can like. Oh yeah. You know, really bend it. It's like a fishing pole. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then Chris. You have the X firm, which like barely it's pretty stiff. Yeah. Right. So that, that comes down to, Hey, what kind of putter are you now? This is where I, they say like, they want you to go get fit for these. Right. And 
work with your fitter to be like, well, what kind of putting stroke do you have? How do you like to feel the ball? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, they give you some like foundational principles. Just like, if you're this kind of putter, smooth might be more ideal for you. Firm might right. be more ideal right. or expert. I don't agree with that. I don't like that. I think like that's hard. It's really hard to say which one you are. And I, I regardless of it, yeah. and I think like you're going to respond to it differently. Like, on paper, I smooth is probably the best fit for me practicing with all three of them and putting them into play like x firm was a winner by a mile really very interesting so like here's what i get out of it the shaft is very it's very stiff it's very rigid mm -hmm. but it's clean you know that's the whole print the whole point of these things they're very clean with great feel yeah and i can really feel the ball on the face of the club that's what they want out of the x firm where the smooth it's like you more use your you know your your swing length and your more of an arms, not, not like don't think like noisy wrist, but like, you know, you putt with your arms and your, your stroke sure. is where like the feel comes from. Right. That's going to be more the smooth player. Turns out that's not a good fit for me. Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, man, across all three of them, it's very noticeable. But if you'd say like, look, I'm, I'm a feel player, but I, I, I work on the fundamentals and like, I'm really not looking for a crazy, a crazy drastic change from steel I just would like better feel and I'm interested in this. Yeah. Firm is probably a good option for you. I think that's the most seamless transition out of the three of them. That's kind of the, uh, I would just, uh, what would you call it? Kind of like the, uh, like almost the Goldilocks of like right. it's kind of middle ground sort of. Yeah. Okay. Right. And I think like you give me, uh, you give me either the X firm or the firm in my gamer putter head and yeah. any day of the week I could go either way. Okay. Um, but man, and here's the other thing. I think they're like 200 to 250 bucks. Not cheap, but I, I there's a certain bit of, at least with these, I feel like I'm getting something for my money. Yeah. And I'm not, I can't, yeah. like, I'm not seeing anything negative about the other ones, but it's like, there's, it's not just a bunch of graphite wrapped up together. Like there's some, there's just a concept to it that makes sense to me. And it, maybe that's just me. I don't know. But having yeah. tried them now, like they're, I, I, I legitimately think they're amazing. They're like my, they're one of my favorite, you know, on the course, like, Hey, see this putter shaft? <laughs> Check this thing out. Yeah. Like, oh, you're crazy. That's stupid. I'm like, and again, into the argument of you use your putter more than any club on the course. I was going to say, you know, 30 times, 30, whatever. Yeah. 30 times around. It's your most used club in the back. Why not invest in it? Yeah. Um, now, one question kick. real quick. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Is it, are, you know, like the, the, the big breakthrough technology, uh, putter, mm -hmm. um, I think the LA shaft one, are these tapered like those other ones? I, I don't know if you are purposely trying to feed me this, but that's a great point I want to bring up. So it's not easy and it's not cheap to make these and, you know, make different versions. And you have to think about that. You have your nice, uh, 355. Scotty Cameron Hassel or your yeah. 370 uh, Odyssey Hassel. I don't even know. I don't even know if Odyssey does a 370 right now. I don't know who does. Either way, you don't want to have, you know, they, they, it's hard to offer two different options. So what Fujikura does, they make it in 355, but it's something like check the materials. Don't say, Oh, I watched that range life and got the number up. <laughs> right. But if you tip trim it like an eighth of an inch, it's then 370 parallel. So, Oh, wow. Okay. In theory, the way shaft tipping works, yes, it could stiffen up the feel a little bit. It's not going to take it from me. You're it's a putter. It's not going to be a ton. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Tiger Woods and his hands, he can tell I can't. So, right. um, <laughs> There is that, but so that's the kind of the cool thing. It's the same shaft. You just, you know, just tip it a little bit and boom, now it fits in a 370 hosel. That's pretty interesting. Worth bringing up though. Chris, what if you have a double bend, a single bend, any, or a flare tip, anything right. that is not into a hosel? Yeah. Currently not an option. You only have straight options available, but I have it on a good accord that Fujikura is looking into possible uh, solutions to this that 
are creative and interesting, and I'll be really intrigued to see what they do and how they're going to execute that and still yeah. like maintain. Because when I asked them about this, system, we, it was kind of cool. I got to like have a big sit down uh, Zoom with them uh, mm. over all this, and I said, I, I have to ask you guys, because how are you going to do this? And they explained the various things they were looking to do. And um, I'm like, I feel like that's a competitive, I mean, that's a, that's a big deal, a borderline deal breaker. And they're like, yeah, we agree. But the battle is like, how do you maintain the qualities of this shaft and account for those? And like breakthrough golf can do it. Cause it's a two piece shaft. You know, it's a steel, totally yeah. essentially a steel shaft that just sticks into the end of the, the bigger graphite portion. Of it. So like it yeah. works a little different. Yeah. This it's all one piece. It's all integrated with different materials. When like, how do you do that? You can't, and the way they explained it to me, like you can't bend graphite and fibers. Like it's going to mess up the structural integrity. You can right. bend right. steel, like steel, a, right. steel, like plumbing, right? It's right. That's all, that's all a golf shaft is. A steel golf shaft is, is a steel pipe. Like you put in, I guess you don't use steel and plumbing, but you get, you get my point. There was, there's steel at like refineries, bend Good it. Point. Right. Right. Yeah. You get that thing uh, with the weird like compass looking thing on the end of a pole and you stick the pipe in there and just go like this to it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Right. So yeah. you can't do that to graphite. It just doesn't work that way. And you're going to change the properties of it quite a bit. So yeah, on the way. Um, here's what I'll, here's what I'll say. Yes, it is expensive. I think it's worth investing. If, if you're, if you're a $400 Scotty Cameron kind of person to me, like this is nothing it's worth it. Hey, I'm going to buy my $400. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to buy a $600 driver and put a $400 shaft in it. No reason not to do that with your putter. Hell, there's a lot of good $150 putters. Shout out Odyssey. Yeah. You know, you stick one of these things in it. You're at 400 bucks like you would just for a same old camera and off the shelf. By the way, someone I saw a post on something recently that said all Scotty Camerons are milled and made in the U.S. And I had the biggest laugh of my life. Um, <laughs> we spent $400 on one of those. There's options. And yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. love this thing. It is. I mean, it is a little different. But once you have it in your putter, you aren't like, what is this monstrosity? It it looks and feels very familiar. I mean, it feels different, but like you aren't going to be like, I'm swinging a telephone pole with it. Um, I love it. I put it, I, I think I brought it out once and immediately put it into my gamer. It has been there all year. You should go, Bill, why haven't you updated your what's in the bag? Because I just haven't. Okay. <laughs> but I love it. I do really like, it. I've been playing the X firm all season. Um, continue to plan to do so it's in my scott redmond concepts high kb2 putter shout out that thing and um i don't know i don't know is there anything else i need to say about it no i'm 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 legitimately uh fascinated i mean by the 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 golf the the putter shaft market in general but this one in particular uh it just sounds like it's it's really well thought out it's fujikura Right. It's, you know, that's this... the other thing I feel like saying to people. It's like, hey, side note, we're talking about Fujikura here. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I get the whole yeah. LA golf. Like, okay. The, the, there was a little spat over social media and I, I, I was here for it. I loved it because, like, competitive industry, it's okay. Yeah. Um, but these guys, I mean, these guys made the Ventus and Velo core. Like, right. they know what they're right. doing. Right. So, they have the tech, they have the know-how and the technology and the R and D and the whole thing. And right. it just sounds like, you know, you've, you've done some, some other putter shaft kind of gear talks and things, but this one just sounds different and thoughtful and really, um, and kind of weird, right? Yeah, like a little a bit, cer- there's a yeah, certain a bit. bit of it when it was all coming out. I'm like, I hear you guys. I don't know though. Like what, what are you saying to me? What are you telling me? And I, I think mm-hmm. like enough people have come around to it at this point where maybe that's not the story as much anymore. But I remember it being like, yeah, I, I hear everything you guys are telling me. I'm re- they, this guy who no longer works for them. He, he moved on to a sick opportunity with Callaway golf. Um, sent me basically this, like really, and I, I don't mean it like me specific, but guys is just, tailor-made for guys like me 
and that mm-hmm. like just the right nerd to normal guy speak <laughs> right. of this thing and the thoughts behind it, like just all the quick hits. And I was like, God, I wish every product I brought in had this because this is yeah, just, yeah. this is making life so easy. Um, yeah. But I, you know, I'm like, guys, I, I'm a little like befuddled here. I don't, these things, it, it sounds great, but I almost like, we'll see. I don't believe yeah. any of it. There's some intrigue involved for sure. Like, okay. Yeah. You and can I don't give like, me the pitch. I get it. You can give me the text speak, but like, this but is how? one that I like actively want to try. Like the other ones like, okay, I, I get it. But this one, I really just because with I, the copper and the rubber in, integrated into it, like I'm really very, very well. And how, one. and given the other ones, like, okay, how wild can it be? And then it's like, yeah. And I remember I brought it out and I was like, oh, I get it. Got it for, and they're like, right. you have, you right. had it for 15 minutes, by the way, when these were coming, uh, I saw the tracking said, you know, they're out for delivery. I went to golf galaxy, bought a thing of quick set epoxy. So I could have that club fully built in less than an Ready hour, to get, out, get out to the practice green with it. And, uh, like, I don't know, like my, my brain's still sort of in a pretzel with this thing, but there's something here. This is crazy. And that's before I even yeah. tried um the smooth and the regular firm i started with the x firm but okay they're wild man they're i I, to like i guess just take it higher level bar room talk here like yeah they're pretty crazy uh yes they're expensive but i love them they feel fantastic and they're really nice and if someone would be like well let's really get into the science like i don't know it's just really cool like i love it that's the best explanation I have for you. I, I love it. And I, I feel like I'm putting better with it and I'm in. There you go. All right. The Fujikura MC putter shaft. You can check out the review on dry range And, uh, Chris, we're going to, I think we're going to do a video about these specifically. We should. I, I want to, cause I'm yeah. really, really, really interested. So we, we definitely should do a bit of a, a thing on them. And people want to know more. I think they want to know more yeah. about it, like on the course, playing with you know a little more, uh, applying the science to it. We'll do that. We'll do all that. Hmm. All right, that was gear talk. All right, William, as promised, uh, out of gear talk into the 500 subscriber uh, competition. Is it a competition? I don't know. Uh, you know. Giveaway. Giveaway, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got the I've got the uh the randomizer here. Uh we'll pull it up and I will announce the winner of should we go over what the prizes are again for five hundred? And now for those that just joined or are just watching this post five hundred, uh you should know that there is a very big one thousand subscriber uh giveaway in the works. Yeah. And it's yeah. better than the five hundred. I know it's when we tell you what you're going to win or what, what this person's winning for 500, you'll be like, there's no way that'll be, it's better. But I'm telling you 1000 will be better for sure. Definitely. For sure. So, uh, this person is going to win a, a handmade, uh, golf ball clock, one of a kind golf ball clock. It's out of reach here, but believe me, it's there. So um, I know we've been talking about the golf ball clock for so long. And I yeah. was uh, looking at secondcitygolf.com the other day for some, just some general work I was working on post. Okay. You know, as I was sitting there with nothing to do in the hospital, I yeah. had a lot of ideas that I had to put to paper when I got home and I saw the uh, custom golf ball clock where you can get a logo on it and whatnot. Yeah. Hey, Scotty, real quick. I need that golf ball clock. Yeah. That thing I will- is so sick and now it's i don't know if it's because we talk about it every week or whatever but i'm like kool-aid consumed love the golf ball (laughs) box so for those that don't that want to go look head over to secondcitygolf.com uh and you can go to the store and you can buy one of the clocks and you can get it personalized and my little brother who's making these things by hand he's he's incredible um yeah wizard he can make you um a personalized logo clock it's super cool Super, super. I have one of those two right here um, for a pal of mine. But uh, anyways, so you're going to win the clock. You are going to win a shot scope range finder. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are going to win uh, a brand new. Is it? I always screw this up. Maverick 
driver. Yep. A right? Callaway Maverick Sub-Zero driver. Yep. Right. You will win $50 to the aforementioned secondcitygolf.com store. So if you want to put that towards another clock, you can do that. Or if you want to buy one of those shirts that Bill's wearing or hats or whatever, we had all kinds of stuff there. 50 bucks towards that website, uh, to, towards the store. And along with that driver that you're going to win, you will get a complimentary fitting by club champion. Though that's what you win. That's what this person's winning just for 500 subscriber and a nothing subscriber milestone. It's, it's important to us and we want to say thank you. So that's what we're doing. Right. It's mild, it is a mile. It's, doesn't help any further with the YouTube algorithms. No, not really. Uh, no. <laughs> doesn't all of a sudden put a bunch of advertising money in our pocket. Just 500 was a from where this channel started. Yeah. Um, to where, frankly, it's grown in the last year. It's crazy. I, notice, notice. I say, hey, this is Chris's YouTube channel. Like we that's how crazy this yeah. journey to 500 now 526 as of today. It's true. It's been for like literally both of us. Like we want to thank people because it, it just, it's special to us. It feels good. It does feel good. Um, and so, yeah, that, those are the things that this person will be winning. Uh, that person's name, as I look onto my screen is uh, Chris Addy, who commented on episode 72. We asked people to give us their favorite uh, Father's Day memories. And thank you to everyone who did that. They're awesome stories. They were such great stories. Um, or such great memories, but, uh, Chris, your name was drawn. So, uh, I will reach out to you and hopefully you get my message or whatever, and we can set it up and we can send you all this stuff. Congratulations, Chris. You are the 500 subscriber, uh, winner. Chris, the rest of you. Congratulations. That's right. For the rest of you, stay tuned. 1000 is coming up quickly. As Bill mentioned, we're already at 526. Tell a friend about the channel. Uh, get them to subscribe and maybe, you know, if, in case they win the 1000 subscriber giveaway, they can share it with you. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We will All right. see. All right, that man. felt good. That felt Chris. good. It felt good to give some stuff away, William. Yeah. Now we just kind of, you know what I thought of? Logistics. <laughs> well, I'm going to see you on, on Saturday. So I'm just going to bring all this stuff and give it to you and be like, here, you're the, you're oh. the guy that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Hey, not I, it. I called it not it. Say, because we want we want Chris to actually get the things he's won. So, all right, all right. bring the Glad driver, got, give it to me. I'll send it out. Glad we got this. Uh, we got this done, Chris. Again, thank you and uh, congratulations. Thank you for watching, everybody. Um, yeah, for sure. Chris, I have some questions. We're coming off okay. a Fourth of July weekend. Um. Like I said earlier, I've been testing the waters. I'm getting, you know, I went, I went to the driving range with the Riv the other day, and okay. frankly, um, as you know from the take it easy discussion, I'm like, I haven't had a, my my whole left side of my body's been all messed up, and I was like, feeling a lot better. I'm making progress. I don't know what to expect though with golf. Got my feet wet. I uh, did a little mat chipping in my okay. yard. I'm like, oh, okay, feels a little weird, but like, I, I'm chipping a golf ball fine shout out Andy Gorman and um, I may or may not have said, well, there's some woods over there. There's a nine iron, maybe take a full swing or two or six and uh, hit some golf balls. I was like, it feels weird, but okay. I want to go to the dry range and work through the bag, see how it goes. So Josh and I met up, I think it was Monday morning. Yeah, it yeah. was. I, yeah. I'm texting him on the fourth. I'm like, Hey, what do you, you, I, I was told you, I, cause I asked him last week and I was like, so I haven't texted you at all yet to try to do this, but, uh, any interest still? And so we had a lovely Monday, 8 a.m. <laughs> meet up at the driving range. <laughs> right. And, uh, it, if it, it felt good to be back, kind of have like a normal human person interaction conversation. Um, Josh also was not fully in the loop because I said to him on the fourth, I'm like, Hey, uh, yeah, this will be weird. He's like, what are you talking about? I go, Oh, you haven't watched the most recent episode of that range life or Chris has also not told you anything. Right. Right. And he, so he, like an hour after that text, like Jesus, what happened? <laughs> so we obviously talked about that Monday too, but anyway, it became apparent to me, like I can fully swing a golf club. It, feels weird um i i do have a little bit of like getting bit by a radioactive spider thing going on so <laughs> i don't hate it but like 
things are different and I wouldn't say I'm back up to speed yet, but it was good to get going, hitting the golf ball again, feel, um, feel like there's some golf hope. Uh, yeah. Like, as I said, we'll be playing. So that was my yeah. golf, but I'm seeing you sharing pictures, which I knew were from golf trips. So you can't trick me into thinking you were playing golf at French yeah. like, on the fourth, <laughs> third or 4th of July. But, um, you got you you had quite a bit of the golf slip into the weekend, yeah. It's true. Um, I also spent some time with the J Riv with the Riv. Uh, I think I can't remember if we played Friday or Saturday. It was, it was Friday. Okay. Um, yeah. So we got out and we played uh, one of my very favorite golf courses. That not I don't know this area, you know, up north the North Shore uh, in Glenview. Um, kind of some sneaky good public courses that used to be very, very private, right? They're older, they're private, whatever. Um, anyways, we went to, to a place called Glenview Park. Short course is probably 6,100 yards from the tips. So it's it's actually very walkable. We usually walk it. But this time, the J-Riv had the idea of riding some fin scooters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Have you done the fin scooter thing? No, we were going to do them at Lasonia last year, and uh, I forgot why we couldn't. I want to say they were already taken by the time. I we think got they might out. have been already taken. Yeah. So um, I'll just give a quick rundown of the. Of, first of all, um, there needs to be more of them because if there were four golfers, each on a fin scooter, you could play around a golf. I don't know, two and a half, three hours. I was going to say it's kind of like everybody has their own cart, and you can just go mm-hmm. off to your own ball. Totally. So yeah. 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 Totally. Like we got through the round in about four hours. We were playing with two other um, lovely women. They were older women, but they were, all they did was hit fairways and greens like all day. And I'm guessing super enjoyable company based on the way you said it, like good time. No, they were the, they are the best. Yeah. They're the best. Um, But yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, I mean, we, it's exactly what you, what you say. Like we hit our shots, we get on our individual motorized vehicles and we go to our golf balls, wherever they may be. And yeah, you could cruise through a round. I mean, they were, I think it's probably an extra, I think they were an extra 30 bucks to rent each of us. Um, and I, I would mean, tell I, you that. I fully understand why for a million reasons. Yeah. But I'm like, God, 30 more dollars on top of it. That is not cheap. No, that it's said, yeah. I think, I think of what could happen with them. So it makes sense. Yeah. And you know, like it's a, it's kind of a, it, I mean, it's not like it's subsidized, right? I think the way that it works, I'll, I'll give you a, again, I'll give you a quick rundown how it works. You book your tee time at X golf course. In this case, it was Glenview Park. You actually uh, rent the Finn scooter directly through the Finn scooter app. Like the golf course has oh, nothing okay. to do with them. I yeah. didn't know that. Okay. Right. Right. So it's not like it's, you know, owned by the golf course or whatever. It's not a subsidized sort of thing. You're, it's a total separate almost business, right? Um, which is why once they're out, they're gone. You can't reserve them. If they're there, when you get there, you can reserve one, but otherwise there's no way to reserve one. Like, right. There's just no way to do it. Um, but you download the app, you scan the sticker, you know, like it's a little barcode on the, uh, on the fin scooter and it's then like boom. Sim- like- yeah, totally. Yeah. It's right. <laughs> right. Right. So then that's the way that works. Um, but you know, super easy and, uh, pretty quick little scooters for that matter. It's not, you know, like you're, you're cruising around. It's a, it's a, it's a good time. It's fun. And there's, I was a little worried about, um, cause you know, I don't go to a golf course bill without a drone and, a you know, a tripod and two cameras and the whole thing. And, uh, I was a little worried about that, but it like, it's fine. Totally fine. Like what was fine. You were able to carry all that stuff still, or you had to go yeah. without it. No, I, I, I still cruise around with it. Like I have it set up in my bag, you know, like everything gets stored in the bag anyway. So, you know, it's still fit. The the bag fit fine. It was a comfort, you know, it was comfortable. It was like, it's fine. Nice. It's great. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was, was, it was, it was super cool. And it's another way just to like, I don't know, experience playing golf. And yeah, I, I really, I would like to see, you know, maybe we can get the four of us together and, and do the fin scooter thing and see how quickly you could cruise their route. It would be so efficient. I was thinking about today. I interestingly, how I'm like, man, I really want to go play Lasonia again, real bad. Me you know too. how we were Me like, too. Hey, if we ever go back, <clears throat> you know, 
we're not even to bother with the other course. It's like just play the Langford course as many times as you can. Many times, right? But the more I've thought about it, I'm like, is that what is it? The Lakes course, Lakes. Is that right? Mm-mm. What what what's it? No, called? it was like the Forest course or something. Or um, God, I should know this because I, I love Lasonia Let's, just call, it, let's call it the Forest Lakes course. Right. Yeah. It was it was something to do with trees. I thought because the one is Lynx and the, wood, the other one Woodland is, was it the Woodland? It might have been the Woodland. I yeah. think it was the Woodland. They're renovating. They've renovated that course, by the way. Already? Yeah. That fast and they're done. Yeah. Was yeah. it like really changing it or just cleaning it up? Because I felt like it just needed a good a good cleanup. I, yeah, I think it just needed some sprucing up. I remember remember that like that part three that was like a total disaster. Yeah, yeah. you know, it was like <laughs> it was a mess. Um, was like I think my, they just did my backyard turned into a right. golf hole. Yeah, right. I think they just did some of that. Some maybe some tree cleaning up and that kind of thing. But anyways, yeah, they. But did. think about like that course, right? Good. And some of the giant hills and weaving yeah. through the woods and long runs. And uh, it's true. The That's beautiful true. lake holes. And I was like, you know what? Then we got to talking fin scooters. Imagine the fin scooters on that course. Never mind the length of course. Get them, get the fin You're scooters right. out on the woodlands course. Hell You're yeah. Right. Let's go. You're right. And even, I mean, we talk about, you know, I just said like how more efficient you would be. Like if the, if we had the fin scooters, cause you can pay whatever it is, like 150 bucks for the day. And play however many times you want. Like, dude, we could run those courses over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we can still get this Wisconsin trip in. We've been talking about since like November last year. (laughs) Yeah. And I'd like to knock out with Sonia. I'd really like to. Um, All right. Anyways. Yeah. That was my, that was my round of golf. It was fun. And I finally kind of like settled back into my usual game, which was also nice just to have like a good round of golf. That was at Glenview. Yeah. And then yeah. you played some golf with another VIP that you have been playing more and more with lately. Tell me. About yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, same, that same day later that day, uh, went out to the burbs. There's a nine hole par three course. Uh, my son, Roberto, uh, Bobby boy, um, he has just taken up the game at 19 years old. Uh, and, you know, so, you know, I'm taking him out. I, I really feel like the par three munis are where addicts are born. Like that's really, <laughs> it's really where it happens. And you can, it's really fun to watch him uh, not be able to sort of comprehend how you can hit a shot so well off of, you know, on one swing and so horribly the next. Yeah. Like it drives him. It is. And this is a kid who's been very, he's very athletic. He's been very successful in his athletic endeavors, you know, state competition type of kid. Um, a guy that uh, most of these things have come naturally. I, I mean, don't everything, be wrong. everything sports comes easy, right? Yeah. Like he, he does work his ass off because that's the kind of human he is. But like, but otherwise like the kid was doing, these fulls and these flips, you know, any gymnast out there, he was doing those nearly immediately. Meanwhile, my daughter's like, it took them years to get Bobby did it, you know, within, you know, whatever, a month, whatever it was. And so he's just trying to understand and you can see it. Like, I don't, I don't know how, why can't I do this? Uh, you know, back to back, why can't I hit two good shots? And it's just kind of like, welcome. I Bob. say you just like welcome you go, because <laughs> golf, right? Because right. Golf. So it was really great, and it's it's kind of fun too. Like a course like that, it was a Friday night. You know, I think we teed off at seven thirty at night, so we had about an hour fifteen minutes of daylight. And um, you know, for a guy like me, I don't live with my kids. I'm divorced. My kids are older, obviously. Uh, just to go and spend an hour and a half. I was to say for you, with my you're son. like, hey, if this. I'm just happy he wants to hang out with me, let alone yeah. do this. Right. Right. And I think, you know, to be fair, I think it was kind of, it worked both ways too. Like Bobby had me for an hour and a half, just, you know, he didn't have to share me, you know, there was no, there was nobody else out there. Uh, no, it was just no him and drone, me kind of no tripod, just right, normal. Chris, right. 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 And, and it, the two of us walking, you know, whatever it was like 1200 yards of golf course, um, you know, and when he hit a bad shot, I would throw another golf ball down and be like, do it again. 
You know what I mean? Like just that, yeah, like do it again. just a no, late again, right? <laughs> right. <Such a laughs> just disappointment. A, no, that was him more like, oh, but it was just right, kind of like, you know, it was just kind of us kind of hanging out. And it was just, it was, it was great. I had a really good matter of fact, I had a good kid weekend all around. Oh, that's now what I win. think about it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, man, 4th of July weekend was pretty good. It was, it, it was, I was texting a work friend. I'm like, man, I took, uh, actually that Friday, um, I, I was as usual asked to join you guys. I said, ah, Liam's birthday. My, my, yeah. my son's birthday could not come. Um, so I had that day off in the long weekend. I was like, God, it's really nice. Not having, not working and just sitting <laughs> and enjoying the nice weather. You fill up the kiddie pool and just I know. barbecue. Take it easy. Like, God, this is a life. How do I do this full time at 36 years old? Turns out it's not easy to do. Um, and I'm mm-hmm. not on track for that kind of life, but it was it's a really good 4th of July weekend. All things considered, my kids were like, I don't want to go to the here 4th of July, five-year-old and a, a nine-year-old. You guys want to go to the parade? No. <laughs> well, you're not just in the house. We're like, no, we'll play outside, go in the pool, do whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. There you go. And then my in-laws, uh, they have like a balcony on the second story of their house. So you can, you can't see the fireworks completely, but you can watch most of the fireworks from their house from afar. So like we didn't have to go to the fireworks either. I'm like, perfect. This is perfect. Awesome. Fourth of July and pro tip. My daughter saw a commercial earlier in the day for a 4th of July slushy at Sonic. And it was, I've seen that with the berries on the top, strawberries on the bottom, that kind of thing. Strawberry, the strawberry, it's like a strawberry, uh, syrup jam or preserves kind of (laughs) thing on the top. That's right. The that's bottom right. layer is blue raspberry slushy. In the middle, <laughs> the middle layer is vanilla ice cream. That's bomb. Oh my god! <laughs> For <laughs> sure, that is life changing. And I'm like, screw barbecues, parades, whatever. <laughs> this is exactly how Fourth of July should be spent. It was awesome. Yeah. And then my, my wife and I like, I'll say we kind of split one, meaning we like combined. <laughs> I think had like a third of it because well. <laughs> it'll kill you and my right. daughter we're just like oh god we thought they were you know we try to get smalls they're not small and we're like to my yeah. daughter like you you can't finish that don't finish she's like why i'm gonna finish it and we're like no <laughs> please please don't now when you when you uh when you eat that do you like mix it all up and then go or do you kind of go layer by layer because i feel like the the vanilla with the strawberry jam sugar they give, you, would they be give like, you a spoon. My my wife was into the mixing technique. I'm like, no, don't, because with the the best way I found, the straw, you go like stick the straw. Oh, down, you go through all that. You get yeah. all three layers in one straw. Straw up, back in. Magnificent. Magnificent. Oh, that's awesome. That's so great. All right, I think that's a good note to close the show on. Go check that out at Sonic if you can. Oh, by the way, <laughs> post hospitalization, Sonic has a Red Bull slushy with two different flavors it's like a drug addict i can't tell you how bad i want it and i can't have it but. dude don't have that yeah please. oh no no, no i'm not, I'm not. I, we're good we're good there you don't need to worry um but although i get it i get it for like as a guy who like you know ivy's coffee for six hours of the day i understand it and but. i'm like I, I guarantee you it's disgusting but i need it i need it iv'd into me all right that's this week's episode of that range of a show sometimes about golf. Please subscribe to this YouTube page. Head over to driverangeheroes.com. We got the Strixon ZX7 driver review up this week from young Thomas ooh, O'Connell out in Arizona. Nice. We got, ooh. This is a good one. This is a good one. Great. Justin, have you read it? The Justin Thompson I have read post? it. The Justin Thompson post of uh, his, he has a, there's something about the year 1953 that he is cosmically connected to. Interestingly, the year uh, my father, Gary Bush, was born. Oh, um, my God. But uh, it's interesting how he has a, a 1953 pickup truck came into his life. And now these 1953 synchro dined, I think it's how you say it, dined. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of it. Uh, yeah. Or Spalding Synchrodyne Top Flight Irons, a lot of brand cross in there, but beautiful clubs. The kid loves them. Um, there's another post coming related to these irons too, but 
go read it. Very good. I, I love all this cool vintage stuff this guy's bringing up and how he's doing it more, not so much like golf nerd talk, but weaving them into stories and weird connections. And yeah, enjoy I was going to say, it's a really fun, entertaining read in general. Yeah, is it a, even if you don't like vintage stuff or whatever, you're not interested in it. Like it's just a fun read. Is it a it's just, small area maybe of the market? Sure, but I think this guy is providing some interesting reads, uh, yeah. fun topics, and a different look than what we're normally reading on all these golf websites. Check Agreed. that out. Um, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my testing the waters with J Riv. If this show didn't fill that enough for you, and just what that was like, I'd say a little bit of a a little bit of a health update, like just sort of what's going on, where I'm at, how things are going. If you care, if you're interested, check it out. So that's what we have going over there. Uh, like the Fuji, like I said, the Fujikura MC Putter Shaft gear talk we had. The review was up there. You can go find it. Yeah. We'll have a link. Don't All the worry. links are right. So do it. Subscribe, like, comment, head over to the website, follow him at, at Chris McEwen. You can follow us at Range Heroes. Episode 75. Chris, I will see you Saturday morning at one of our home courses. Can't wait. Can't wait. And everybody else?